So we talked about how light travels as waves, but light is kind of peculiar. It actually has a dual nature. It has um, wave-like properties, but it also has properties of traveling as particles. Um, light is basically generated as a stream of photons, which are little bundles of energy that act like particles. Um, and on this screen, what I did is I kind of put in one place all of the formulas that we're about to look at and some constants that you need. So what you can do is you can calculate the energy of all of these little photons of energy, okay, these little particles that are moving. It's, it's Planck's constant times the frequency. So H is Planck's constant, and you multiply it by the frequency of your, your light. And Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. No, you don't need to memorize it, okay? Um, this equation right here is really the same equation, just instead of frequency, I put the speed of light over the wavelength, so it's not really new. This equation we learned in the last video, so nothing new there. This equation is going to allow us to calculate the energy of a specific energy level, which we'll talk about in a minute, okay? And that's N is the energy level, and RH is called Rydberg's constant, which is given to you here at the bottom. Again, no, you don't have to memorize it, okay? And then this equation right here comes in really handy when we try to find out how much energy it takes for a particle to move from one energy level to the next. Uh, and really it's just a combination of the, the equations above put into one equation. Uh, you won't need to memorize that equation. I'll give it to you if you need it. Okay. So hopefully you learned about this last year. You looked at some atomic spectra. What you do is you take um, electricity and send it through a gas, and the electrons in the gas get excited. We say they're excited and they're promoted to higher energy levels. Okay, so maybe from n equal to 1 to n equal 2 or 3 or 8. Um, but they don't belong up there, so they fall back down. And as the electrons fall back down to the, a lower energy level, they emit, um, they emit light or energy. Okay, and certain, only certain amounts of energy are possible, so only some frequencies of light are emitted. So this equation right here allows us to calculate the energy of each energy level. The energy levels are really, should be drawn as circles, but that's a little hard to do on a piece of paper. So per, for instance, this might be n equal to one. So this would be n equal to two and three and four and five and six. And we can use this equation right here to calculate the energy of each energy level, okay? So each one. And then if we wanted to know for instance, if an electron fell from n equal to 3 down to n equal to 1, I could calculate the energy level, the energy for energy level 3, and the energy for energy level 1, and then just subtract them. And that would be the amount of energy that would be given off. And that would be good to know because I could use that to find the frequency of the light. Okay, just giving you kind of an overview of some things. You'll see that actually doing this is very simple. It's plugging into a bunch of equations. Okay. Hopefully, um, again, hopefully last year you looked at this. This is a picture of your energy levels um, and all of the possible transitions that might occur. So all of the arrows are trying to show you what's happening, okay? So in all the possibilities, possible transitions, the electrons for this first section right here called the Lyman series, okay, is when an, ener an electron falls from a higher energy level down to the first energy level. So 7 to 1 or 6 to 1 or 5 to 1. These transitions give off light, but we can't see any of them, okay, because they're in the UV range. Now this series right here, called the Balmer series, gives us four transitions where the energy actually gives us a frequency that falls in the visible light region. So we can actually see these. In a minute I'll show you what the hydrogen spectrum looks like. Though hopefully, again, you saw it last year. And then other transitions, where you go fall to the third or fall to the fourth, exist. But again, we can't see them because they all fall in the IR range. So we can't see those two, and we can't see this one. But with these, these right here, we can see because these are in your, the visible range. Okay. Again, we'll see what this looks like in a minute. 
Hopefully last year you looked through a spectroscope at hydrogen, and these are the four lines that I just showed you, okay? You should be able to see a red and a green and a blue and kind of a, a violetish. Um, so hopefully when you looked through at them last year, you saw them. Um, the kinds of problems that we might see are going to look kind of like this, okay? MRI is a powerful diagnostic tool in medicine. The images used in hospitals operate at a frequency of 400 megahertz, okay? Mega just means 10 to the 6. So we want to change that frequency to wavelength. So we're going to remember that we have this equation. C is wavelength times frequency, okay? So 3 times 10 to the 8th. equals the wavelength, which we're looking for, times the frequency. So that would be 400 times 10 to the 6th hertz. So the wavelength is going to come out to be uh, 0.75 meters. Okay. Now, all frequencies and wavelengths have energy associated with them, and the energy is pretty easy to calculate. It's just Planck's constant times the frequency. And again, you don't have to memorize this constant. You just need to be able to use it. Okay? So this times 10 to the minus 34. Again, times 400 times 10 to the 6th. So this gives us a very tiny energy, 2.65 times 10 to the minus 25 joules per photon. And remember, a photon is just a kind of a bundle of energy that acts like a particle. Um, but instead of figuring out how much I have per photon, how about if I figure out how much I have per mole of stuff? So this is going to bring back good old friend Avogadro. So all I'm going to do is a little conversion where I change this. Okay, first I'm going to go ahead and change, see we've got joules per photon. I'm going to change joules to kilojoules. And I'm going to change photons to moles. Okay, so 1,000 to 1, um, and there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons, or anything, right, per mole. So this comes out to be uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, kilojoules per mole. So if I had a mole of these little particles of energy, this is the amount of energy that they would have associated with them. Another kind of problem that we're going to see is we were looking at transitions in the Balmer series. We're going to look at the wavelength for a transition that falls from n equal to 4 down to n equal to 2. Now we could calculate the energy of each energy level and subtract it, but instead we have that equation that kind of puts everything together for us, so it's a little easier to use. So we'll learn how to use that. Okay. 1 over n low squared minus 1 over n high squared. Okay, so Rydberg's constant is just 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Okay, I don't know, I don't think you did this last year. And then 1 over the low is the 2. So 4, 2 squared, minus the higher energy level is the 4, so 1 over 4 squared, or 16. And if you do all that math out, which isn't too hard, you get 4.86 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or we often give it in nanometers, so 486 nanometers. And if you looked at the electromagnetic spectrum, you would see that that corresponds to the color blue. So when we look at the atomic spectra of hydrogen, we see one line that is blue, and that blue line corresponds to an electron falling from n equal to 4 down to n equal to 2. Now, Bohr was really, really sort of instrumental in moving us forward in atomic theory. Um, unfortunately, his theories only work for things that have one electron. So it describes really, really well hydrogen, but it doesn't really describe anything else. So what's next? Well, go watch the next video and learn all about quantum mechanics.